begin with the news in Jamaica. The government has ordered a lockdown of the crime-riddled parish of St. James. On Thursday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness made it the declaration. St. James has seen a drastic increase in murders, triggering this latest crime-fighting measure. Tamara McHale reports. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Thursday declared a state of public emergency for the parish of St. James. This is of course due to the escalating crime numbers in the parish. I have been advised by the security forces in writing that the level of criminal activity experienced, continued and threatened is of such a nature and so extensive in scale as to endanger public safety. In consideration of this, I wrote to the Governor General recommending the declaration of a state of public emergency for the parish of St. James. The Governor General has signed a proclamation dated and effective 18th of January 2018. The proclamation has been gazetted. A state of public emergency is now in effect for the parish of St. James. The state of emergency in St. James became necessary with over 300 murders committed in the parish in 2017 and a deadly start to the new year. Last year, there were 335 murders in the parish. This is almost twice that of any other parish with Clarendon having 168 murders over the same period. There are numerous gangs operating in St. James. These gangs are involved in murders, shootings, scamming, extortion, and other illicit activities. They use murder as a tool to further their criminal interests protect turf and to incite fear. They create an atmosphere of insecurity throughout St. James and surrounding areas. There have been many incidents where criminals use high-powered weapons to carry out killings and reprisal against other gangs in several areas of St. James. In addition, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck also gave some staggering statistics. The data show that the parish of St. James has historically and comparatively recorded the highest number of murders for a parish in the history of the nation. In fact, the parish that has the second highest number of murders recorded, just about half the number of murders that were recorded in St. James. Quick in other words, the number of murders in St. James is twice as high as the parish that has the second highest number of murders in Jamaica. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Holness outlined what will now happen in St. James under this state of emergency. Under state of public emergency, the security forces will have extraordinary powers and some rights are suspended. This does not mean that the use of these extraordinary powers can be arbitrary or are beyond review. The declaration of a state of public emergency does not mean the suspension of the rule of law. The security forces are expected and have been directed to treat citizens with respect and protect the dignity and safety of all. Clearly, the operations which will be conducted, though directed at criminals and their facilitators, and I want to repeat that, the facilitators of criminals, will create some level of general discomfort. We ask the public to cooperate with the security forces. A hotline has also been set up. The number to call is 830-8888. Or call Crime Stop at 311. Meanwhile, Chief of Defense Staff Rocky Mead explained what is now happening on the ground. What you can expect is that all persons using 
all roads leading in and out of St. James may be subject to search, vehicle search and personal search. In various areas of the city and townships, you will see um, joint patrols, static and mobile. The troops will be pursuing wanted persons, violence producers, and may therefore require the cooperation of the citizens of the parish. National Security Minister Robert Montague is making this appeal to the people of St. James. We are appealing to the citizens of St. James for any information that you may have. Now is the time to tell us who the gunmen are and the gangsters because a gunman or a gangster in your community is a danger not only to your community but is a danger to you. Therefore, any information you have, all information you have, we need it. We need your full cooperation in moving forward, in restoring peace and order so that the good people can continue to contribute to the well-being of Jamaica. And as for the duration of the state of emergency, well, this was the Prime Minister's response to journalists. We will not declare to the, 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 the public uh, for strategic reasons. Good afternoon, sirs. Why did it take so long for this kind of action for St. James? Although you didn't ask specifically, but I know you really intended to ask me that question. The government has been contemplating this action for some time. This is not an action that can be taken in an arbitrary way. It requires a great deal of planning, and it is not just um, a, a, an action for show. It is an action where we have to plan out both the opening and the ending game. And that kind of planning takes time. But more importantly, it takes resources to be behind it. And I believe that we are now at the point where the actions are now aligned with resources. But there's one other important alignment. The government cannot act without public support. And uh, as the person in charge of the government, and given the context in which we are calling this state of emergency, having gone through one um, in 2010, we must always be considerate of what happened before. We must make sure that we learn from the errors and that this is not something that, I repeat the word, arbitrary. It is not done in an arbitrary way. This is an instrumental, well-planned out action. And yes, it took some time. Some people, some persons may have felt it should have happened long ago. But I'm, I'm now of the view that this has happened when we have an alignment of all the variables to make this operation successful. From that side, Mr. Denny. I'm sorry, the microphone will come to you. Thank you very much. Hope to make Connor Denny, Senior International Correspondent, Vision Newspaper Canada. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, I heard you talk about a public emergency. And I hear this talk about a limited state of emergency. And I hear about emergency powers from the... the um, Commission of Police, which it is. Secondly, I hear about a gazette, um, this operation being gazetted. Can we see that at that publication? We have copies for it. Thank you very much. All right. Thirdly, um, we I want Mr. One Denny. Question per, I think, per right. So I think we can limit it to two. We have a very limited amount of time. So, Mr. Prime Minister, if you could answer those two for me. Well, I'm hearing all kinds of terms being used, but we have deliberately stuck to what is in the law, and we have declared a state of public emergency. Uh, I know of nothing else. I hear all kinds of other terms being added on. One such term is limited. We have not declared a limited state of emergency. The parish of St. James is now effectively under a state of public emergency. All right, from this side now, I, I recognize the hand of Ms. Chisholm, who had hers sticking up real quickly. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, 
two questions. Two in the first round. First yes. Uh, I know Major General Rocky Mead mentioned that the JDF reserves has been called out, but how will the security forces be able to police two zones of special operations, the state of emergency in, Monte in St. James, as well as the rest of the country? And what is happening with Clarendon? You mentioned the stats about 168. What type of intervention will be carried out there? Thank you. A very good question, but I will answer you in this way. We did not take this action arbitrarily and without consideration. So it is planned. And as I said, there is an alignment of the plan, the resources, and public support. And having all those three critical variables in place, we have acted. The resource is not just the monetary resource or the, the motor vehicles or the, the warlike provisions or the intelligence the real critical resource is to have the troops and the forces on the ground and, and therefore we have taken that action. There are some questions that will be asked here which we will not answer. Not that we don't have the answer, but we will not answer it because we do not want to disclose our strategic intent. From that side of the room, uh, Nika Lewis. Right, thank you. Okay, good afternoon. I am wondering how long will this state of emergency be in effect for? And also, if anyone has tried the number that's being told that we should call, the, yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. Again, we will not declare to the, 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 the public uh, for strategic reasons the, the duration of the state of emergency. Um, as regards the number, um, I'm certain that the security forces will, will respond to you on that. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I believe we are out of time. Thank you so much to all members of the media for coming. You, you, would you, you have the time for one more, sir? Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want the press to say we avoided questions. So. All right, well, let's take two more then, one from this side and one from that side. I know so many hands went up, so we have just this one and one last one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prime, Prime Minister. Could you, you identify yourself? My name is Garnet Roper. From which press? Probe from many things. Probe. <laughs> I will answer probe. Did you contemplate this public emergency at a time of Zoso? last year. I'm curious because a lot of people have died and I'm wondering what to your mind is the Rubicon that has been crossed at this time. I hear you talk about the alignment of forces and I'm asking a sub second subsidiary question. Can the police, given its lack of mobility, really, be of any significant impact at this time, given the fact that that has not changed. And then lastly, I gather from those who know, this is it's the same question, that the signal has been sent that this was going to happen and there has been substantial movement already out of the property. Profit the parish by a violence producer. How do we know that this will be more effective than the Zoso rather than just a public relations gesture? Thanks, Mr. Roper. Uh, very good questions, uh, Reverend Roper. Uh, just going from recollection, as I said, we have been contemplating this measure. We have put together a comprehensive crime plan. Uh, there is some amount of uh, panic I would say in the country where people would want the government to almost react immediately from a knee-jerk perspective. All that we are doing is very deliberate and very strategic. We, we recognize that this problem, which has been created for now for the last 30 years, where we have seen a geometric increase in crime, particularly in murders, um, and you really can't say that any of the interventions other than the last state of emergency has resulted in any significant reduction. 
what we have learned from the last state of emergency is that you cannot be forced into it. You have to plan it. Because the moment that you use it as a reactionary tool, that's when you will make terrible mistakes. As you can see from the zones of special operations, regardless of what the superficial criticisms may be, we were very deliberate and very strategic. Importantly so, to give the public the level of assurance that the government can use force without violence. The objectives of the zone were to reduce murders, restore public order, and build public confidence. On all three counts, the zones have been very successful. There is a notion abroad in the public that the only way to fight crime is that we have to go there and kill people. It is not my intention to do so. We fight crime by enforcing the law. And we can only enforce the law by using force in a lawful way. And you would have seen that we have taken a great deal of time to ensure that the use of these extraordinary powers are within the law. So even this exercise is a demonstration that the Jamaican state can use and can be trusted with extraordinary powers in the protection and defense of the innocent citizens and as the chief of defense staff says, even the criminal. Mr. Sharp, you're supposed to wait until you're identified. That I'm is sorry. But, but seeing that he has broken the, the, the law. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. you're a yes. DC. So the final question. There were three hands that went up at once, and I know the Prime Minister has said he'll just yes. take one final. So uh, we'll give it to the woman who is carrying... Well, the, 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 the tourism concern. We have, again, put that in the equation of consideration. And uh, let me, uh, several stakeholders, including stakeholders in the tourism industry, have written to me to say that they are of the opinion and would support the necessary actions to bring the parish of St. James um, under control and restore public safety. And I think that should answer the question. I think all members of the tourism fraternity would uh, be prepared and can be assured, can be assured that our security forces will act in a way that will be a credit to the destination. I think that the present state of global security would would have a sense of awareness in travelers to be even expecting of greater security presence. And, and finally, Kalila Reynolds from Nationwide. I'm sorry, could you, could you just say it a little louder for us, Kalila? Yes, go ahead. All right, so there are two questions, well, well, one on just, numbers. Just to say, the questions that you have asked, um, are good questions. The one that you have asked of me, I will not answer for strategic purposes. Major General? The powers that we have allow us to search. I have encouraged my troops that out of respect for our citizens, they are to be polite. So I do expect them to ask, and it's the same way you would ask anyone, you know, I ask my 
secretary or my driver to do something. And I say, please, uh, but they know they have to do it, but it's a matter of being polite. So um, the, 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 the powers allow us to search, and you cannot uh, refuse a request, but nonetheless, the instructions I have given is for polite interaction with the citizens of Jamaica. And that's the reason I articulated it in that way.